Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. And today what we're going to dive into is getting started with Sysmon. So let's hop right in. So what is Sysmon is a good first question, right? So what Sysmon is, it's part of the Microsoft Sys internal suite. And what it does is it logs extended system activity to your Windows event logs. And so this covers things like network connections, file events, process creation, things like images being loaded. Um, and what it gives you is a really detailed view into your system. And you know, one of the things you do have to be careful with this is with that detailed view, there's obviously things you have to do to tune. So we'll talk about tuning a little later, but what Sysmon is, is it, it's really, it gives you that other layer of depth that might help your threat hunting or might help your security program, depending on who or what you're looking for. Um, it's a Windows system driver and device driver. So this is something that when you install it, it actually installs as a service. And this persists across reboots. So, you know, you can roll this out, whether it be across your domain or to a single host or to a group of hosts, depending on how wide your threat hunt or monitoring program wants to go. Um, but it persists across reboots and pushes to those Windows event logs. So getting started with it, you just have to go to the Sysmon site, which is now hosted on Microsoft. Before Microsoft didn't kind of own the project, now they do. But you go to the Sysmon site, you download it. Um, if you're using 64-bit, like we are in this example, you'll see Sysmon 64, um, the except EULA-I. And what this does is it loads the Sysmon service with the default configuration. But this is all you have to do to get started. This is obviously something too you can roll out across your industry or across your network if you want to, um, but that's getting started. And then what happens with that is now, if we go to our Windows event logs and specifically within the Windows event logs, if you go to application and service logs, Microsoft Windows, Sysmon, operational, you can see it down there at the bottom of the screen. Now in the Windows event log, we can actually see that, okay, we're getting process creation and process termination logged. This isn't something that's part of the normal Windows event log. So again, depending on what we're looking for, these logs can be very powerful. So, you know, now we have the event logs. Previous step, we loaded it up. Now we actually have the event logs. So important note, these are what the um, Sysmon event logs are by default, the event codes for it. So like I said, we have things like the process creation and termination we saw. You have network connections, right? Which can be super, super powerful. Could also be super loud if you don't filter it down. We'll talk about filtering, I think, in the next slide. Um, but you have things like event ID 6, drivers loaded, right? You can even get down to threads, right? So 8, create remote thread detected, right? You can look for things like process hollowing, you can look for some of the more advanced attack techniques. Um, this is really where Sysmon provides a ton of value, right? Because you really could take a, a piece of malware or you could take a group's TTPs, you know, figure out, hey, what extended logging IDs actually meet that given TTP? Um, and, or, and then how am I actually going to filter down these logs and potentially look for it, right? Um, you even have things like DNS queries, so event ID 22, right? You can actually watch new content on the clipboard if you want to. And what's interesting with that is you would say, hey, Dan, isn't that going to be super loud? You're right, but you could look for, you know, either pro allow processes and be like, hey, these processes normally are the right to the clipboard. I'm not worried about them to where, hey, let me look at maybe processes or applications that are launching out of you know, this directory or this part of my system. And so again, if even if you're looking for thing like, things like clipboard activity, you can use Sysmon to really go down into that event or behavior happening on the system. WMI 19, 20, 21 event IDs. Um, again, WMI is heavily used by a lot of different attack groups. And so you have the ability here to really monitor um, WMI at the host level at a very granular level. So not all Sysmons are, Sysmon events are enabled by default. Um, and we're actually about to talk about what that looks like. So stay tuned for the next slide. So we've loaded it, right? And we just said, well, not everything's enabled by default. 
So if you use the Sysmon tax C flag, what this will do is show you the currently logged configuration, right? So the default configuration as we see here doesn't have network monitoring turned on. It's probably because it's super, super loud, especially if you have a lot of applications that are using network resources um, and things like image loading, right, are also disabled. You'll also see down there, no rules are installed. We'll talk about rules soon. Um, but out of the box, if you just turned on Sysmon and you enabled it, um, this is what it would look like, right? This is what the configuration of it would be. Um, so you're still doing DNS lookups. So DNS lookups are actually telling Sysmon, hey, go do a reverse DNS lookup. If you get a domain, you might wanna turn that on or off, right? Depending on how much you wanna load your network um, or how loud DNS or you know, lookups might be on a system. But again, this is what the default config looks like. So if we wanted to build our own config and we're only going to scratch the surface of this in this talk, and then next week we'll actually dig a lot deeper into building a really tailored Sysmon config. Um, but if you wanted to start your build, building your own config, if the config we saw in the last slide isn't sufficient enough, you can do this Sysmon tack dollar sign config flag. And what this will do, this basically gives you the man page, if you will, for the Linux types, right? This is a manual page of, hey, this is what a Sysmon config looks like. Um, this is how the rules work. And, you know, this config usage information is a good way to either get started or if you need this as a reference, a great way to look up maybe as you're building out the config. So, you know, what we're going to do is show a very simple config today, right? So let's say we wanted to turn on network connection monitoring, right? Um, and we're going to turn it on for um, traffic that's not associated with a process called firefox.exe or iexplore.exe. If you're on Windows, and especially if your Windows is updated, make sure to add MS Edge in here. But from that config page that we showed, from the man page we showed in the last slide, the schema that we have to build to Look for, hey, network activity not associated with firefox.exe or iexplore.exe. What you see on the left there, that XML is all that it takes, right? Um, so we've added a very simple rule here. We have a rule group in this group relation, right? You see it says or in there. So we're saying if it's firefox.exe or iexplore.exe. And what it's mapping on or what it's matching to is image. And so if you pull up Sysmon and if you pull up the network configuration logs, image is one of the fields in the logs where you actually have the path um, and the process name in there. So we are looking for paths or process name that end with Firefox or iExplore. If we go ahead and enable this, and again, you're going to use a Sysmon 64 tax C again, but this time you're going to give it the new configuration file. What you're going to see there on the right is now network monitoring is enabled. If we look at the bottom of this command prompt, you actually see the rule that we created at the bottom. Um, so we know that this rule took, we know it's there. And if we go back, you know, we used an example, we stood up just a Python simple HTTP server. So, you know, very, very basic Python server. And what you can see here, if you look at this, right? is the image in this case, right, is C users test app data local programs, and you see the python.exe at the end. Well, you know, python.exe ending is not the same as that iExplore or firefox.exe. Um, so this was a rule that matched, right? And now in the Sysmon logs, what we have here is we have that source IP, we have the destination IP, we have the host names there. Um, we know the process that actually connected this. So. With that very simple rule now, we found a Python simple HTTP server instance on the local machine. Um, you know, this is, this is super powerful just straight out of the box for potentially finding something that would be a weird network connection. Obviously, depending on the context of your machine and what users do on the machine, you know, the number of different processes and the variance from, you know, user A to user B in the systems they use, you'll have to take that into account. And especially as you design the Sysmon config for your enterprise, right? You might say, okay, well, our design team uses something like Photoshop, right? And we know Photoshop does a lot of internet connections out, right? So you might say, okay, for the Sysmon config that we're sending to the graphic design team, um, we're going to take Photoshop out of the logs just so 
you know, it's not as noisy. It's not taking up as much disk space or infrastructure to get it out. But, you know, out of the box, this shows an example of just a very basic sysmon config um, beyond the default config, right? Because again, this type of networking config is not enabled by default um, if you were just to load sysmon in its default config. So, you know, this was a very quick overview of sysmon, of how to get started, what sysmon is, how to get started. Um, what the default configs looks like, a little bit into rules, and then we saw a basic rule. Next week, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some more advanced rules, um, and we're really going to look at, hey, how do I connect Sysmon to finding an advanced attacker's behavior based on what we know about their tools? So thanks for joining in this week. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, we'd love to hear what you thought about this talk or if you have ideas, and yeah, we hope to see you back next week. Thanks a lot.